One of the most powerful arguments against Islam comes from one of Muhammad's early scribes. Allah would give a revelation to his messenger Gabriel, then Gabriel would pass the revelation on to Muhammad, then Muhammad would recite the revelation to his followers, and they would try to memorize it. But memorizing it was difficult, so a scribe would write down the revelation. A man named Abdullah ibn Sa'd ibn Abi Sar converted to Islam and became one of Muhammad's scribes. But he eventually left Islam and became an apostate. Why did a man who learned the Quran from Muhammad himself decide to become an ex-Muslim? It wasn't because he wanted to drink beer, or because he wanted to eat pork, or because he was being paid by the Jews. It was because he had indisputable proof that Muhammad was a false prophet. Let's read a quick summary of the problem that Abdullah saw. A little context, when Muhammad conquered Mecca, he ordered his followers to execute specific people, even if these people took refuge inside the Kaaba. Abdullah ibn Sa'd ibn Abi Sar was one of the people Muhammad ordered his followers to kill. Why did Muhammad demand Abdullah's head? This is from 23 years by the Iranian scholar Ali Dashti. The last named on Muhammad's execution list, referring to Abdullah, had for some time been one of the scribes employed at Medina to write down the revelations. On a number of occasions, he had, with the Prophet's consent, changed the closing words of verses. For example, when the Prophet had said, and God is mighty and wise, Abdullah ibn Abisar suggested writing down, knowing and wise and the prophet answered that there was no objection. Having observed a succession of changes of this type, Abdullah renounced Islam on the ground that the revelations, if from God, could not be changed at the prompting of a scribe such as himself. After his apostasy, he went to Mecca and joined the Quraishites. So, Muhammad would receive revelations and recite these revelations to Abdullah, his scribe, and Abdullah would say, in effect, why don't we write it like this instead? And Muhammad would reply, fine, write it like that. Abdullah eventually realized that if these were actual revelations from God, and if Muhammad was an actual prophet from God, Muhammad wouldn't keep letting his scribes make changes to the text of Allah's perfect, eternal word. Abdullah concluded that Muhammad wasn't a true prophet, and he abandoned Islam. This was a huge embarrassment to the early Muslim community, so much so that Allah even complained about Abdullah in his eternal speech, the Quran. Surah 6, verse 93. The commentary we're going to read in a moment uses the Pictal translation, so we'll read the Pictal translation of this verse. Who is guilty of more wrong than he who forgeth a lie against Allah, or saith, I am inspired, when he is not inspired in aught, and who saith, I will reveal the like of that which Allah hath revealed? So, Allah is condemning someone who forges a lie against him, and someone who says he's inspired when he isn't, and someone who says, I can reveal verses just like the ones that come from Allah. According to Muslim commentators, this verse is actually referring to specific people who said these things. We read the historical background in Azbab al-Nazul by al-Wahiri. Who is guilty of more wrong than he who forgeth a lie against Allah, or saith, I am inspired, 693. This was revealed about the liar, Musaylama al-Hanafi. This man was a soothsayer who composed rhymed speech and claimed prophethood. Wow, imagine composing some poetry and then claiming that you must be a prophet because of your awesome poetry. Seems like this was popular in 7th century Arabia. He claimed that he was inspired by Allah. So, one of the people Allah condemns in Surah 6, verse 93, is Musaylima. But there's another. And who saith, I will reveal the like of that which Allah hath revealed? 693. 
This verse was revealed about Abdullah ibn Sa'd ibn Abi Sar. This man had declared his faith in Islam, and so the Messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and give him peace, called him one day to write something for him. Muhammad didn't just call him one day. Abdullah was one of Muhammad's regular scribes, but this commentary is going to focus on something that happened one particular day. When the verses regarding the believers were revealed, Verily, we created man from a product of wet earth. This is the passage about the creation of man in Surah 23, 12 through 14. The prophet dictated them to him. When he reached up to, verse 14, which says, and then produced it as another creation, Abdullah expressed his amazement at the precision of man's creation by saying, so blessed be Allah, the best of creators. So, Muhammad is delivering revelations about the creation of man, and Abdullah, who's writing down these revelations and finally learning about how Allah created man, exclaims, So blessed be Allah, the best of creators. Now watch what happens. The Messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and give him peace, said, This, Abdullah's last expression, is how it was revealed to me. In other words, Muhammad said, Abdullah, your words, so blessed be Allah, the best of creators, those words you spoke were just revealed to me as part of this verse. At that point, doubt crept into Abdullah. He said, if Muhammad is truthful, then I was inspired just as he was. And if he is lying, I have uttered exactly what he did utter. Hence Allah's words in 693, and who saith, I will reveal the like of that which Allah hath revealed. The man renounced Islam. This is also the opinion of Ibn Abbas according to the report of Al-Kalbi. Now let's put all of this together by reading the Quran passage that ultimately led to Abdullah's apostasy. In Surah 23 verses 12 through 14, Allah declares, Verily we created man from a product of wet earth then placed him as a drop of seed in a safe lodging, then fashioned we the drop a clot, then fashioned we the clot a little lump, then fashioned we the little lump bones, then clothed the bones with flesh, and then produced it as another creation. Scientifically, this is complete nonsense. Embryos don't go through a blood clot stage. Also notice that bones are formed before they're clothed with flesh. So the clot becomes a lump, then the lump becomes bones, and only after the bones are formed are the bones clothed with flesh. Again, total nonsense. But after the part, and then produced it as another creation, we have, so blessed be Allah, the best of creators. These words, so blessed be Allah, the best of creators, were blurted out by Muhammad's scribe, Abdullah ibn Sa'd ibn Abisar, while he was writing down Muhammad's revelations about the creation of man. And when Abdullah blurted out, so blessed be Allah, the best of creators, Muhammad said, yes, put that in there. That's how it was revealed to me. You'll recall Abdullah's reaction when he learned that something he blurted out was included in Allah's eternal speech. At that point, doubt crept into Abdullah. He said, if Muhammad is truthful, then I was inspired just as he was. And if he is lying, I have uttered exactly what he did utter. Hence Allah's words, and who saith, I will reveal the like of that which Allah hath revealed. The man renounced Islam. Notice Abdullah's reasoning here. Abdullah thought to himself, there are two possibilities. Either Muhammad is truthful, he's actually getting revelations from Allah, or he's not truthful, he's a fraud. If Muhammad is truthful, if Muhammad is a true prophet, then I'm a true prophet too, because I said those words before Muhammad said them, which means that Allah must have revealed them to me too. But if Muhammad is not truthful, if he's just a deceiver claiming to be a prophet because of his poetry, then I can do that too, because Muhammad himself is taking my words and passing them off as revelations from Allah. Pretty solid argument. What did Abdullah do? The man renounced Islam. Abdullah became an apostate. 
but not for long, because Muhammad eventually conquered Mecca and demanded Abdullah's head for causing him so much embarrassment. Fortunately for Abdullah, he was Uthman's foster brother, so Uthman interceded for him. The story of how Abdullah survived is pretty hilarious. I'll make a separate video about that. But Abdullah was loyal to his foster brother Uthman for saving him. During the caliphate of Uthman, Abdullah even became the Muslim governor of Egypt. But notice, when Abdullah was free to decide what to believe, he said to himself, There's no way Muhammad is a prophet. If Muhammad is a prophet, then I'm a prophet too, and I know I'm not a prophet, so Muhammad's not a prophet. I renounce Islam. Only with a sword to his neck would Abdullah become a faithful Muslim. And here we see why even Muslim scholars admit that without the death penalty for apostasy, Islam would have died out long, long ago. So my question for you Muslims who live in Western nations, my question for you Muslims who are free to leave Islam is, why can't you see what Abdullah saw? One of Muhammad's early scribes, a man who heard revelations directly from the lips of Muhammad, realized that there's no way Muhammad was a true prophet. Abdullah saw that. Why can't you? Abdullah only lived as a Muslim later because of the death penalty for apostasy. What's your excuse for continuing to follow the most obvious false prophet in history? You notice that he quoted Ali Dashti about a certain scribe who said that he was changing things to suit himself in the Quran and that Muhammad killed that scribe. But the best information we have about that scribe is that in fact he, after reneging from Islam, came back into the Muslim faith and he survived the Prophet Muhammad. So to say that the Prophet Muhammad killed him, that's incorrect. And to cite Ali Dashti about this is to cite a non-scholar as far as I'm concerned. I have no reason for believing that Ali Dashti has expertise in these matters, especially especially since we have historical information about this particular scribe. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Say, He is Allah, who is one. اللَّهُ الصَّمَدُ Allah, the eternal refuge. لَمْ يَلِدُ وَلَمْ يُولَدُ He neither begets nor is born. 
وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ Nor is there to him any equivalent 